often research teams might include some more experienced users or researchers um, and some, some who are less experienced. And so one approach that I've used in the past is if I'm training new members of my team, just keep them really focused on the features of in vivo that they need to know. So expose them to the rules, right, to your team protocol. Um, but if they've never used in vivo before, really the core things that they need to know how to do if they're working collaboratively is open a project and code data to a node and maybe create a new, uh, create a new node, right? So you can keep that hyper-focused, that training hyper-focused, and keep people up and running faster. In vivo is definitely a learned language, and that's sort of a lot of the um, learning curve for new users to in vivo is to learn to think like in vivo things and what do these words mean in in vivo. But once you're there, I find that I can get at the information that I need to get at. I um, know how to run really complex queries in in vivo. And the fact that that's possible, and I can do that across all sorts of data types, I mean, that's why I use that particular software. So you may have different needs depending on you know, who you are, what data you're working with, how you're choosing to collaborate. And so you know, for that, I just encourage you to do your homework and understand you know, why one package might fit you better than another. So I've spoken quite a bit in these videos about in vivo because that happens to be what I know. Um, but you know, there are the packages out there, and they all essentially do the same thing, which is allow you to code text. Um, they just have different strengths and weaknesses. The really important thing when you're working as a team in in vivo and you're approaching qualitative data analysis as a team is to have a plan and stay organized. That's the name of the game. And in qualitative data analysis generally, that's what in vivo is designed to do. It's designed to help you conduct your analysis by staying just crazy organized, keeping your um, themes at your fingertips, keeping your data at your fingertips so that you can get back to the original data and also ask really interesting questions. So keep in mind that's your goal. In these videos, I've talked a lot about in vivo because it's what I use. And there's a couple reasons why I use it. One is it's what I learned. Um, I learned in vivo from a professor in grad school, and that's what she knew. And eventually, that's what we had access to in class. That's what we were asked to use for our projects. So I picked it up, and I ran with it. Um, I use in vivo because it does essentially everything I need for it to do. It um, supports the analysis of my interviews. So disclaimer. I am a certified in vivo trainer. So what that means for me is that I use in vivo, I use in vivo pretty much exclusively, and that's because it does what I want it to do. So I use in vivo in my job here at Duke. Um, I also train others in in vivo for in vivo. What I really like about that, the reason why I do that is because it empowers people to do really awesome things, to do really cool research. And that's why I'm a trainer, is because I love to see that light bulb go on and for people to be like, oh yeah, this is making this so much easier. Or I can do really cool things with this. Or this is really amazing. Just you know, full disclosure, I do train for them. But it's because I think that people do awesome research and I want to help them do it better.